and welcome to this 3IE video about evidence gap maps. Thousands of papers are published every month. We know that some of these papers are impact evaluations and some of them are systematic reviews, but they're all scattered in different journals, databases and websites. So for users looking for evidence, this is a challenge to separate the wheat from the chaff and to access uh, the evidence that they're looking for. Another issue is that research reports are often published in inaccessible formats. So they, they're long technical reports, which might be difficult for non-experts um, to read and understand. A recent study by the World Bank, for example, highlighted this issue. This study looked at the, the use and downloads of World Bank research reports. The study found that a third of research reports had never been downloaded and 87% of the reports had never been cited. So this is a lot of research funding being spent on uh, research reports that are never used. So this situation creates a lot of waste. It's, it's a waste of opportunities to improve people's lives through the use of the best of available research evidence. It also means that we risk wasting research funding by duplicating work that has already been done and not prioritising important evidence gaps. So how can we make sure that high quality evidence from impact evaluations and systematic reviews are made easily available to users in a format that is accessible? So at 3IA we've tried to address these issues by developing evidence gap maps. Evidence gap maps are essentially thematic collections of evidence focusing on a thematic area or a sector or a subsector. They're structured around a framework of interventions and outcomes that are important for a particular topic area. So the evidence gap maps are developed drawing on systematic review methodology. And we developed this a platform for displaying visually the available evidence. So the, the bubbles represent the availability of, of studies. So the size of the bubbles indicates the volume of evidence. And the colour of the bubbles indicates the type of studies. So the grey bubbles are impact evaluations, whereas the coloured bubbles are systematic reviews. The colours of, of the bubbles for systematic reviews indicates the quality of the evidence or our confidence in the findings of systematic reviews based on assessing the methods used in the reviews using a structured checklist. So green bubbles indicates systematic reviews where we have high confidence in the findings. Orange bubbles are systematic reviews where we have medium confidence in the findings and red bubbles are systematic reviews where we have low confidence in the findings. And finally, blue bubbles are systematic review protocols, so areas where systematic reviews are ongoing. So evidence gap maps can help inform the strategic use of scarce research funding and make sure that limited resources are used on studies that matter. So for donors or funders of research, the evidence gap maps highlight areas where there are important gaps in the evidence. So for example, it indicates areas where there are no or very few primary studies. So if these intervention outcome areas are of particular interest, then it suggests that there is a need for more studies in these areas. On the other hand, by highlighting where we do have a body of existing primary research, it can help us target where we do new systematic reviews so that we avoid commissioning systematic reviews that end up concluding that we need more research. Evidence gap maps aim to facilitate the strategic use of limited research funding. So for donors, for example, evidence gap maps highlight where there are no impact evaluations or areas where there or no high quality systematic reviews and in doing so they can help inform decisions about where to prioritise new research. So similarly for researchers the evidence gap maps can help inform where you focus your next project 
And at the same time, by giving you access to existing studies, it allows you to easily use those studies to inform the science of, of your own research. Finally, evidence gap maps can be a tool to support the use of evidence to inform decision making. We know that policy processes often move quickly, but evidence gap maps can be conducted relatively rapidly, allowing decision makers to access, have access to the best available existing evidence. And evidence gap maps do this by bringing together all existing systematic reviews on a topic and it allows decision makers to explore the evidence by accessing summaries and appraisals of the existing evidence. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please visit our website and explore our evidence gap maps.